I want to welcome you to your library online. This is going to be a video that will walk through all of the virtual programs and other online offerings of the Independence Public Library. So to start with, we're going to function tonight from our website. So you will open your internet browser and go to independenceia.org slash library. This brings up the library website. As you can see across the top, there's a toolbar here with some different options. There's also a scrolling um, newsletter, scrolling slideshow here for you. These are all clickable links. As you can see, each different one would take you to a different page. As you scroll down our website, you'll see there's a catalog search feature, which would allow you to search, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. And if you continue scrolling, we have our event calendar here with the upcoming events listed for the next couple days, as well as an option to view all, which would allow you to look at an entire month or a week if you were curious about specific events. Also on this main page is an easy click for the hours and the contact information. Uh, this is updated for our COVID-19 information and we will update that if and when our hours change. So we're gonna start at the top of the website and work our way through. First of all is the books, eBooks, and more tab. So the first thing to see here is this section that says bridges, audiobooks, and eBooks. You click on that, it brings you to a web page that tells more about bridges and its information. There is a video tutorial here for you that's nice and quick. My talk tonight will go through the information in a bit more detail and show you some neat features that Bridges does offer to patrons of the library. So to reach Bridges, you can click on the picture here that says Bridges, and that should open up a new page for you where you will be asked to sign in. So first you'll select your library. You can type in IND, it'll bring up independence. Then you'll type in your card number and your phone number or whatever password you've set for Bridges. This is the main landing page for Bridges and the categories that are on this front page change based on the time of year. So first of all, at the top, they're highlighting their magazines. Magazines on Bridges are always available and they don't count towards any limits on your account. If you scroll down then, you can see some Halloween favorites here, Hispanic Heritage Month, fall into a good read, and so on. On these books, you can see that there's a banner across the top of the title uh, image that says available. It would also say place hold if the book was not available for immediate borrowing. So what you'll do is you'll click on the title that you're interested in. Um, you can also see here before I click that this says ebook. And this one says audiobook. So I'm going to choose to click on this ebook. And this is going to allow you to do a couple different things. It allows you to borrow the book if you're sure that this is the book you'd like to read. It also allows you to read a sample of the book if you're not sure if this is something you'd be interested in. It allows you to add the book to a wish list. This is like a list of books that you hope to read one day. Um, some people call it a to be read list, or it allows you to add it to your history, which would then show up in your account as books that you've already read. If that's useful to you, you can click on those options. If you continue scrolling, then you'll see a description section, followed by a details section, followed by different reviews. And then on the right side of the screen, it lists the different subjects in the formats that this title is available in. You can click on these subjects if that's something you're interested in. If you'd like to read more fantasy or more thrillers, it's a great feature. In the middle of the screen here, it shows you how many copies of the book are available. This book is available now. There's two out of the three copies available. Sometimes you will see that that number is much higher, maybe up to 40 or 50 copies available just depending on the popularity of the book. 
Sometimes the book will also say always available. Some of the classics are that way. And then if you scroll down the page, you'll see something that says you may also like. These are also read-alikes for you, books that you might be interested in based on the first selection that you made. So if we go back to the main page of Bridges, you can see at the top of the screen, there's a toolbar here that has a number of different options. So this collections is going to be the bulk of the information available. You can see that it's broken into ebooks, audiobooks, magazines, and videos. As I said, magazines are always available. There's something you can check out um, or you can read them on your computer. Um, audiobooks and ebooks have a number of different features depending on how you'd like to search. There's available now. These are books that are available for immediate download, immediate checkout. New editions, and then editions broken down into age group, followed by most popular, and try something different. I like to try something different, especially as you keep using Bridges. It starts to understand the books that you enjoy and then starts to offer you different things to try um, to spread your wings a little bit in terms of what you're reading or intaking. So if you click on ebooks, we're going to go to ebooks and we're going to click on uh, the new ebook editions. This brings up all the books that are new. And you can see here on the left that there's a thousand results available. These books are sorted just like in a number of online websites. You can sort them in a number of ways. Something that's pretty interesting is you can sort it by library popularity. So this looks at the popular titles at the Independence Public Library. You can see which books have been most popular. You could also instead sort by global popularity. This looks at all of the users of Bridges and what's available. Another option for Bridges, if you know specifically what you'd like to be reading, at the top of the page there's a search bar. You can click on that search bar and type in a title. So say I'd like to read The Silent Patient. It pops it up here, The Silent Patient. If I click on that, here's the book. You can see here this is an ebook, this is an audiobook, and they're both listed as available. If I click on that, you can see here at the middle of the screen that there's one of 39 copies available. This book is an Advantage book that we have available through our library, and I'll show you what that means when we get to the catalog later. If I know that this is a book I'd like to read, I will click Borrow. It will give me an option to borrow for 14 days or just for seven, depending on how long I need it for. And then I will click Borrow. I now have it checked out until October 20th. I can read it with Kindle, read it in my browser, or download the book itself. This is especially useful if you'd like to read it using a Kindle app on a Kindle e-reader or on a tablet that you have at home. Um, you can download that option. If there's another book that I'm interested in, I'm going to go to the search bar again. This book is The Great Alone. You can see here it is, it's popping right up. I want the ebook, I don't want the audiobook. And as you can see here, the ebook has a wait list. You can see at the top it says white, it's white, it says wait list. That's okay. So I'm going to click on place a hold. And it tells me that I'm number one on 12 copies of this book. So likely what that means is that I'll be getting the book to my um, account pretty quickly, but it's not immediately available for me to start reading this evening. So then I can close out of this. You can see now that that screen has changed and it now says go to holds rather than uh, place hold. Lastly in Bridges, if you click on my account up at the top of the screen, there's a lot of options there that you could explore. We'll start with loans. 
This is going to be any book that you've checked out, any book that's available to you, currently downloaded or currently available to download. So I have two books checked out right now, The Giver of Stars and The Silent Patient. You can see right here at the top, it tells me I can borrow three more titles. The accounts are set up through our library. Each patron can have five titles borrowed at one time. The books are available for 14 days, at which point you can renew if there's an available copy or it will automatically return the book for you, which is a nice feature to have. If I continue down the list of options in my account, holds is the next. These are books that I've placed on hold. We just placed The Great Alone on hold. I'm number one on 12 copies of that book. There's a new book out called Transcendent Kingdom that I'd like to read. And currently I am in position number 63 on three copies of this book. Bridges shows me that I'll be waiting at least six months for this copy. It's a nice thing to be aware of. That way I'm not checking compulsively for a book that won't be ready for quite some time. It allows you also to suspend your hold, to remove the hold, and you can see here, you can have up to 10 items on hold at one time. Next is a wish list. These are books that you'd like to read. Um, you can see here, these are books that I've already added. And it tells you right away if they're available or not. You can see here, these are all available actually. Um, and so if I'm ready to borrow those, I just click on borrow or place hold would appear. There's rated titles. This allows you to rate titles that you've read so you can go back and reference that list. Say you read a book that you really enjoyed and someone later asks you, this is a nice place to keep track of those things. Recommendations allows you to recommend titles to our library for purchase on Bridges. This is helpful if there's something that you'd like to read on your e-reader or listen to as an audiobook that you do not see available right now. And we have staff here that review those and make purchases accordingly. Then there's a history section. This shows you books that you have uh, checked out and then tells you more information about them. Are they ebooks? Are they audiobooks? Who's the author? When was it loaned? What is the rating on Bridges? And then what's the rating that you've given it, if you've given it a rating? So this is a walkthrough of Bridges. Bridges is a program that we can access via the website, but it also allows you to download an app to your iPhone or to your Android. If you have an Apple product, you're downloading the Libby app. It's this little girl reading a book is the image. If you have an Android product, you will be downloading the OverDrive app. And it's exactly the same as the website. It's just um, made for the mobile device. So if we go back to the library website, When we click on the next options here, the next option is check out an e-reader. We have four e-readers available to patrons at the library preloaded with titles. These are available to be checked out for two weeks at a time. To check them out, you just take a short training, you sign a, a user agreement form, and you check out the device It includes a case and a charger. The books are downloaded to the device and you do not need internet to use this. It's a handy thing to use. Um, it's not as heavy as a book and you can check out as many as you like in those two weeks. Underneath this category, there's also online book clubs. This is something that the Friends of the Library helps support. And what it does is it sends you each week, each day of the week, a small snippet of a new book. Monday through Friday, you get a snippet of a book. And you can see there's a number of types of books available if this is a, a service that you'd be interested in. When you click to sign up, you would just put in your email address and it would be ready to go. 
Next, we have the online catalog that will be referenced here soon. Suggestion for purchase is another option. This is something if there's a book that we don't have, we'd be happy to consider it. Again, there's no guarantee, but that's a place to put that in if you're interested. And then what to read next. There is a number of resources here available to you as a patron if you're curious about what, what comes next for you in your reading life. Um, there's staff picks available. These are things that um, the staff here every other month choose a selection. And there's also a display in the library of those items. There's book suggestions. If we click on that, it tells you a number of options here for you. Um, different websites, book page, these are options that you could use. We'll talk about books and authors in a little while. So that covers the information underneath this first tab. Quite a few resources already and we still have a lot to get through. Next is programs and services available to you at the library in a virtual or online format. The first one I'd like to highlight is the library card section right here. If you click on that, this talks about getting your library card and the information that's needed. So first you would need to bring a picture ID and then something to verify your address. So if you've recently moved and your old ID does not have your new address, as long as you have something such as a piece of mail, a rental agreement, a car registration, a voter identification card that has your new current address that would work for you to get a library card. You can come into the library, but if you'd rather, you can click here on this link in the middle of the screen to apply for your card or to renew your card. Those applications are processed within two business days and we mail your information to you. That's helpful if you're unable to come to the library or if due to COVID, you're not yet comfortable um, being in a public space like our library. Underneath programs and services, the next option I'd like to highlight is the podcast. This is brand new as of October. Our first podcast at the library is called On Reserve. I, Caitlin, host this podcast. It's bi-weekly. We're looking at the most popular titles in our community and then offering you some read-alikes. Um, we're also highlighting different services, one of which we'll talk about this evening. There's a listen here button that allows you to log into a website where you can listen. You can also find our podcast on other platforms where you listen to podcasts, such as Apple Podcasts or Spotify. There's also show notes available talking about each episode that we have um, done and what books and other information is talked about during that episode. Next, underneath programs and services, you'll see notifications. If you click on that section that says library link, it brings you to this page, which talks about electronic newsletters and messages that are sent periodically during the week or during the month that are available to you at no charge. The information is required here. You just select the newsletters you'd be interested in receiving. You put in your name and your email. You verify you are not a robot and you subscribe. At any point during the week or during the month when you receive a newsletter, if you'd no longer like to receive it, you're welcome to unsubscribe as you would any other newsletter. The nice feature about this website is that if you click on a newsletter and then you click view latest issue, it allows you to see the information that's featured in the newsletter before you subscribe. So if this is not something you'd be interested in, you wouldn't have to sign up to receive it. Or if something really piques your interest, you could check it out in the future. So for example, staff picks, this is from September. This was the most recent highlighting Laura's pick, picks from the past, and then specific um, books around a certain topic. Lastly, underneath the programs and services, there's a virtual programs tab right here. If we click on that, it brings us to a page that highlights virtual programs that the library is offering. 
both live and recorded. Once this presentation is recorded, it will be found on this page as well. These programs are set up based on age of the audience. So twice a month now we are offering Maker Mondays. This is a space where we have uh, crafting projects available, kits to pick up for kids. They can craft and then we talk about different resources available at the library. Teen programs, we have some crafternoon um, projects from this summer that are still lots of fun and available to craft with as well as Lizzie Lake's cooking demonstrations. These are all video links. If you click, it would take you to a video. Then we have adult programs. So lots of workshops available. Dan Lake joins us for cooking here. And then the Hoover's Presidential Library and Museum here in Iowa have been sharing with us their third Thursday uh, speaking events. As you can see, we've had a number of different speakers Coming up this month, we have something about World War I with President Hoover, and next month, a presentation on the life of Laura Ingalls Wilder. If you click on any of these links, it takes you to a, a video. So for example, the Air Fryers link takes you to our Hello, YouTube everybody. where you can see this is the video, and there's lots of information listed here in the description if you were interested in how to make the recipe or how to make the craft. Lastly, in the, on the library website, underneath the Research and Explore button, there are a number of virtual programs, virtual resources available to you to utilize as you would like. The first is Ancestry.com. This is a library edition that's available to library patrons. There is a video tutorial here as to how to use Ancestry, so I will not go into this in too much detail. But it is available for use at home or here in the library. Next, under Research and Explore is BrainFuse. This is a very powerful online platform available for job searching services job preparation services and services um, useful to veterans. So if you know someone who needs some more information about their VA benefits, about other resources available to them as a veteran, I would encourage them to look at this website. And lastly, there's a lot of information for high school students and college students as far as skills and practice tests. If you click on that link, this is what it brings up. Lots of information here. Uh, you can see interview resources, information about resume writing, there's live tutoring available, ability to create flashcards, ability to um, watch virtual lessons. It's really a great resource I encourage you to check out. Next is Credo. So we'll skip down to Credo. Credo is an online reference service with over a thousand full text titles, lots of images and videos. You can click right on the, the logo here to access that website. When you log in for the first time, you will see it will bring up that you are with the Independence Public Library. It will ask you for a password. That password is independence with all lowercase letters. And now it allows you to start your research. You can see here that there's popular topics available of which you can click on one if there's something specifically that you're looking for. Or if you're curious about something that you don't see, you can type in the name or the, the uh, subject. So Ruth Bader Ginsburg recently passed away. I thought we could look up information about her. So if we start typing that in, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. It brings her right up that we can click on her name. She's a familiar topic, lots of information available. So it brings up kind of a map on the side showing you different people that she might be associated with. As you can see, Harvard Law School, a number of other Supreme Court justices as she was on the Supreme Court there. 
and then it shows you lots of information from different books and other resources. Biographical Dictionary of Women, Encyclopedia of, Women's Almanac, etc. Lots and lots of data here, lots and lots of uh, information available to you about whatever topic you might be interested in. We go back to the library website. Next is Gale, Gale Resources. You may have seen this on our website, but you might not have realized just how rich of a resource this is for you. This main icon, when you click on it, will take you to another page full of information. Again, if this asks you for a password, the password will be independence, all lowercase. As you can see, there's a number of different categories available of which you can search specifically. Anything from diversity to religion to high school additions to gardening. Uh, one that's particularly of interest or might be in this election season is this one titled Opposing Viewpoints. So if we click on that, it will bring up the password page, of course. So we'll type in that password of independence, all lowercase. Opposing Viewpoints going to have a number of issues available already. So we could click on an issue here, but I'm going to type in the issue of vaccines. I know people that um, are pro-vaccine and I know other people who are anti-vaccine and I'm curious about more information of both sides of this issue. So when I type in vaccines, it's going to bring up right in the middle, it says on this page, and it starts listing information. You can see here there's everything from viewpoints to references to videos, websites, infographics, statistics, lots of information for me to peruse and make an informed decision. You can then see there's information from a number of resources from far left to far right and everywhere in between. And the data is relatively uh, recent. This is from May of 2020. There's information from 2019. And as you keep scrolling, this video came from 2018 from the New York Times, 2017 from the New York Times. Lots of options here for you to do your research, do your own um, information searching and, and decide what your viewpoint is and why. You keep scrolling, then there's lots of related topics at the bottom. So if you start reading and you start thinking about, okay, now I'm curious about health insurance. If you click on that, it takes you to a similar page with similar types of information about health insurance. Great option for you. So that's Gail. There's a number of options here for you. You can see lots of different types. Another option that, another resource that's available to patrons of the library is this Transparent Language Online. Transparent Language Online is something that also has a video tutorial, very easy to use. But I would like to show you a few things on the inside of this program. So if you click on the logo, it takes you right to the website. It's going to ask you for your username and password. If you have not yet set up your account, you will click on sign up. Here you will insert the password again, which is independence, all lowercase. Once you do that, it will allow you to set up your account. I already have an account, so I will log into there. This is my personal account. I'm interested in learning about uh, Spanish language. So I've already selected Spanish as my language type. And it set up a learning path for me with a number of different units 
lessons, um, different types of learning. So you can see here on the right side, the practice, there's reading it, there's saying it, there's writing it, there's hearing it, all different ways of learning language. Keeps track of the number of vocabulary you've learned. It keeps track of any goals that you're setting. But at the top of the screen, it shows you the different languages that you might have selected previously. But if you're a brand new learner, this is what will be available to you. Lots and lots of different languages that you can research and learn. So I think this is a great option for folks that are looking to pick up a new language. Maybe you're doing some traveling or maybe you have some family that speaks something different. Maybe you're interested in just expanding your worldview. Different languages that you can choose to learn here are available. So now if we go back to the library website, the last thing I'd like to go over is our online catalog. So when I go to the website homepage, to get to the catalog, there's a couple different ways to do so. You can click on books, ebooks, and more, and click on online catalog. Alternatively, you can search in this toolbar for the catalog, or if you click on my account, it will take you to the catalog webpage. So this is the website catalog or the library catalog. When you first pull it up, this is what it's going to look like. So at the top of the screen, you can log into your account. It asks for your card number and for your phone number or your password, depending on what you've set up. So I will log in here and log in with my password. So now it allows me to choose my account and this is where it's going to show me the account information. So you can see here, first of all, it's going to tell you how much money you've saved by borrowing from your library and any information that you've set up. It allows you to choose your notification settings. So if you're interested in receiving a telephone call versus an email or a text message, it shows you all the items that you currently have out and gives you the ability to renew those items. It shows you any reserves or requests that you might have made when you reserve that title, the status of that title, and the place that you are in line. It shows you any bookmarks that you might have bookmarked, and I'll show you what that looks like later. And then it shows you the history of your checkouts for the last one year. This is especially helpful if you're curious if you've recently read a book or if it's something that you um, are interested in reading again. This does take some time to load, depending on how many books are in your, in your history. So here you can see the history. It tells you the book, the, the author, the date that you checked it out, and the date that you returned it, as well as when it was due. So at the top of the screen is the search function for the catalog. This catalog lists every title we have available in our library, both as a physical copy in our building and as e-copies or virtual copies available through Bridges. You can search by title, by keyword, by author. You can see here some common searches the title starts with or the title phrase, author and subject. But if you're interested to click on more search options, you can even search by things such as material type or subject. This scrolling line of books across the top of the screen are all new titles added to our catalog in the last few weeks. It's a great place to start if you're looking for something brand new. So I would recommend that you also do some searching as we have hundreds and hundreds of titles available in our catalog. A nice option on the catalog homepage is all of the electronic resources that we went through are available here as well. So if you're curious about something and you can't remember how to get there, if you can find the catalog, you can find all these other resources. Credo and language, Gale, 
bridges ancestry. Then on the right, underneath what's hot, you'll see most popular. These are titles that are very popular in our library, titles that um, we can't seem to keep on the shelf always. If a title is red, it's currently checked out and unavailable for immediate pickup. If it's green, it's available and you're welcome to place that on reserve or come in and check that book out. What's new allows you to find different types of items. You can search by specific item or you can search all items added in the last anywhere from one week to two months. And book lists. Book lists are available. Um, I encourage you to check these out. Lots of information here based on different categories of books. Staff picks are available if that's something you're interested in. If you really enjoy reading the types of things that Vonnie recommends, you can check out other picks that Vonnie has had. If, for example, you're looking for books that help grow someone's imagination, the word list books are a great, it's a great book list to check out as well. So if there's a book that we see that we're very interested in, say for example, we're interested in this Amelia Bedelia, we're, we'll click on that book. This is called Paint the Town, Amelia Bedelia and Friends. You can see that this book has an option to reserve and an option to bookmark this item. If we bookmark this item, we now have it available at our account as a bookmark. So now we can see here's Paint the Town by Herman Parrish, the same book that we just placed a bookmark for. Placing a bookmark does nothing but to add it to your bookmark list. It does not check the book out to you. It does not reserve the book for you. If you decide that that book is no longer something you're interested in, you can remove the bookmark and it will clear it out. If you are interested in wanting to reserve this book, you would click Reserve This Item. It would ask you how you would like to be notified and you will click place reserve. It now tells you that you have already reserved this item. But if you decide that you no longer want to read this Amelia Bedelia book, you would go to my account, reserves, where it says paint the town by Herman Parrish, you would cancel that reserve. It's now been deleted and it will not be pulled for you by library staff. If the day comes that you'd like to read that book again, you can of course come back to the catalog and reserve it again. One other option that's especially helpful, for example, if we're curious about this JD Robb book, Shadows and Death, we can see this book is red Three people are waiting for this title, but you'd like to read something today. The catalog gives you an option, if you scroll down, of titles you may also like. These are similar books, some by the same author, others by different authors, that you can check out or reserve. Although I will tell you sometimes these similar books are also unavailable and have a waiting list. But it's a great feature and I encourage you to click around in there as you're looking for more information. I did want to show books and authors as well. Books and authors is something that's helpful if you're looking for something to read. Maybe there's a book that you really enjoyed and now you're looking for something else like it. So just like in Bridges, there's a home page here with different categories of books that you can check out. But if there's a specific book that you know, for example, if we look at The Silent Patient, it brings it right up for us. Tells you about the book, lots of different information here for you. And then it tells you about the genre and the subgenre different subjects. So for example, if you are interested in books about law enforcement, you could click on that. And now it gives you results about law enforcement. And as you can see, the silent patient shows up on that list. This is another very useful way to um, find new things to read if you feel like you're in a little bit of a rut. 
The last feature of the catalog that is helpful is the e-reader search. So on the main page of the website, I showed the e-reader listing and talked about the four different e-readers that we have available for checkout to you. If you just search the word e-reader, it will bring up this listing for e-reader 1, 2, 3, and 4. It says it's an e-reader tablet. If you click on that, this is going to show you every single book that is loaded onto that tablet. It can be a little bit overwhelming, um, but if there's a specific book that you're looking for, when you search for that book, if it's on the e-reader, it will show up in the search listing. For example, there's a more recent title called Waiting for Tom Hanks by Carrie Winfrey. If I search that title in the search field, you can see here the book itself shows up, as does the Bridges copy in the audiobook. The e-reader also shows up, which tells me that this book is available on the e-reader itself. That's a useful feature. The last thing I'd like to highlight here for you is that there's different listings of Bridges. There's Bridges Advantage, and there's regular Bridges, where it would say Bridges audiobook or Bridges ebook. If you see the word advantage, what that means is that there are specific copies reserved for Independence Public Library patrons. This guarantees that you would have a shorter wait time for those electronic copies of either an ebook or an audiobook, making sure that you don't have to wait for up to those six months like you saw earlier in the video. Something to look for if you're curious, um, something I encourage you to check out. Don't be dismayed if you see a long wait time as there's separate copies set aside just for you. If you click on a Bridges Advantage book, it will tell you that Independence Public Library has purchased extra copies of this item. So that's something to look for.